Indeed, a good preschool education helps a child to develop self-confidence and social skills, to nurture values such as sharing, taking turn and being responsible, to build a good foundation for the learning of languages, and to develop the disposition for learning, such as curiosity and the courage to try new things. Let me emphasize that the value of a good kindergarten education is not in learning academic content. Our children should have a holistic development through a quality kindergarten education. This is especially important for those from the lower income groups who may need more support. To provide opportunities and to enhance social mobility, we must help all our children start well in life. And the government will invest significantly more in preschool. I recognize that many parents have urged the government to nationalize the preschool sector. Many members too. Mr. Zainuddin Nodin had said this as early as a decade ago, and earlier in the earlier budget debates, we heard Mr. Chris de Souza making the same point, and earlier Mr. Nispo as well. Today, we have a diversified kindergarten and childcare sector, commercial operators, anchor operators, and VWOs. Each brings a certain value. I know of several educators who have set up kindergartens to pursue the deep conviction in the value of early childhood education and have built up innovative programs. I respect their dedication and the diversity and choices they offer to parents. The diversified landscape serves parents well today. Our most important priority now is to work together to raise the quality. Arising from the work of the Implementation Committee for Enhancing Preschool Education, which Minister Chan Chun Seng and I co-chair, there are five areas of focus for uplifting the quality of preschool education. Of these five areas, MOE will take the lead in three. First, we'll continue to develop the kindergarten curriculum and educators, resource, educators guides and share teaching and learning resources with operators. This complements the revised curriculum framework for kindergarten. Second, we will leverage on the existing programs in our institutes of higher learning to provide high quality training and professional development for kindergarten level teachers. Third, MOE will run some kindergartens. For a start, MOE will set up 15 pilot kindergartens in the next three years. Five of these will enroll K1 children in January 2014. Some of this will be located in primary schools, some in community sites. All will be within HDB heartlands. These kindergartens will first and foremost provide a quality education that will be affordable to Singaporeans. Our specialists will develop teaching and learning resources and best practices to enhance children's learning. We will also work with other preschool centres that offer good programmes to study different approaches. Best practices that are scalable, sustainable and suitable for the Singapore context will be distilled and shared with other preschool operators to catalyse improvements across the sector. I must emphasise at the outset that this is a pilot programme. MOE believes that we can leverage on our resources to provide quality kindergartens and act as a catalyst for the entire sector, giving the growing demand for quality kindergarten, MOE is prepared to go beyond our 15 pilot centres. But how far and how fast MOE proceeds will depend on our experience and assessment of it and the feedback from parents. As it is, MOE has heavy responsibilities and an expansion into providing affordable, quality kindergartens in the heartlands is a significant undertaking. MOE will not undertake this lightly unless there's strong public support for it, and unless our assessment is that we are creating significant value for parents and children. There are also important logistical and staffing issues that we will need to look into. We will therefore gather the views of the public and the various stakeholders as we formulate plans for the medium term. Meanwhile, MOE and MSF will continue to work together with other operators through the newly formed Early Childhood Development Agency, to expand capacity and raise standards while keeping fees affordable for the majority of Singaporeans. 
We will announce details of the first five locations and admission procedures in about two weeks. And SMS Indrani will provide further details on some of our other efforts, while MSF will elaborate on the other two areas of focus. So I thank Ms. Lao Yanling for pointing out the many tasks ahead for the Early Childhood Development Agency. Students enter primary school with different dispositions and readiness for learning. Sometimes this is due to learning difficulties, but often it is a lack of home and parental support for learning. Some parents are keen to help, but do not know how. Others are preoccupied with making ends meet or with family problems. Some students come to school with low expectations of what they can achieve and are not putting in enough efforts. To address this, MOE will embark on a comprehensive program to level up our students. This will help every Singaporean child, regardless of family background, start from a quality kindergarten and then build a strong foundation in the 10 years of primary and secondary education. This is especially important for students from disadvantaged backgrounds or who need more dedicated support. This levelling up efforts will be integrated with our overall approach in our schools to develop engaged learners. In other words, it is not a standalone programme. Students who need help in specific areas will be given more attention and resources. When they have achieved the baseline mastery, they will be taught using other learning approaches. This is a student-centric approach in the spirit of what educators call differentiated teaching, or in Chinese, ying tai shi jiao. Our levelling up efforts will nurture engaged learners through four prongs. Let me speak on each of these in turn. The first prong is building confidence and the motivation to achieve. This is the core of learning. A child must feel that, yes, I want to do it, and yes, I can do it. A teacher must set suitable challenges and help each child experience success. We must create a virtuous cycle of effort, success, confidence, effort. Effort leading to success, success leading to confidence, and confidence leading to more effort. This is especially important for those from disadvantaged backgrounds. So we need efforts from all parties. First, building confidence at preschool levels and extending this in our schools. And we'll infuse this in our school curriculum, CCAs, and character and citizenship curriculum. Second, working with school-based student care centres to reinforce the efforts of our schools for students who need extra support. Not just ensuring that they do homework, but nurturing a resilience to succeed. Third, we'll intensify partnerships with parents, self-help groups and community organisations. Parents play a critical role. SPS Hawazi will elaborate on this later. The second prong in bu is building literacy and numeracy foundations. In our preschool, MOE already provides literacy assistance to 250 preschool centres. This helps children from lower income backgrounds who are from a non-English speaking environment. This is done through one-on-one -on -one sessions or in small groups. Over the next two years, we'll provide this assistance to another 100 preschool centres. The Lee Kuan Yew Fund for Bilingualism will catalyse preschool bilingualism efforts. Such efforts will help our children build a strong foundation in English and their mother tongue language from young. In our schools, we are helping all our children learn through better research-based methods. Stellar for English language and literacy and a concrete pictorial abstract for numeracy. For the mother tongue languages, students learn through appropriate modules and methods that take into account their linguistic abilities and their home language environment. For students who start primary school with weaker foundations in literacy and numeracy, we have the Learning Support Programme for English and Mathematics. We will now take a further major step to provide specialised help to more students so that they can achieve a higher level of baseline competency in literacy and numeracy from primary school all the way to secondary school. As these students learn in different ways and at a different pace, we will implement several learning programmes and novel teaching approaches to engage them. This will level up our students at zero cost to them. 
students from low-income families, which many of you have spoken about, will get the extra support they need from our schools. Now, the third prong is skillful teachers. We'll resource our schools with skillful teachers to do this well. Schools with greater need will have more teachers deployed to them. Our teachers will also work with our specialists to constantly improve these programs and approaches through action research and determine the relative effectiveness of each of these for different students. MOE will launch a comprehensive training program for the primary and secondary school teachers who will lead these efforts. This will enable them to better identify the learning gaps of their students and to customise how they teach. So I fully agree with Dr Intan's call for MOE to provide specialised training for teachers of NT students. You gave a very passionate account of your teaching experience. And like you, we recognise that students often improve because they are motivated by their teachers who also provide them with social-emotional support. And we'll continue to study how we can further improve this. And I welcome your suggestions, Dr Intan. The fourth prong is a whole school approach. This comprehensive levelling up effort will build on initiatives announced at last year's COS, such as the expansion of student care centres in schools and significant moves to increase support for students from less advantaged backgrounds. This includes enhancements to the MOE financial assistance schemes and school-based financial assistance scheme, the EduSafe Merit Bursary and the School Breakfast Program. I'm happy to report that I've met many of the students who have benefited from these schemes, uh, as well as their parents, and these are well used and well appreciated. But as our comprehensive program to level up our students is being rolled out, there are students who are about to complete secondary schools. They will not have the opportunity to benefit from this effort. So instead, we will pilot a program in ITE, the Extended NITEC Foundation Program, to help these students build up their literacy and numeracy skills during their, their NITEC years and to enable them to complete the NITEC course. The aim is not to extend their stay in ITE, rather it is to give them an opportunity to go further.